Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about analog outputs of Arduino port. So, we know that um, analog output in Arduino is not really an analog output. It's actually a PWM signal. What is PWM? What does PWM mean? PWM means post wise modulation. So, when we try to um, use the digital output of Arduino, it actually generates either it's 0 volt or 5 volts but we can also change the output voltage by using a very specific uh, technique which is on or off so let's say if you have uh, let me draw it over here so let's say if you have a duty cycle which is this one so if we say this is 5 volts and this is 100% if you just turn on the power for 50% overall the if uh, the effect is going to be like you actually generate 2.5 volts so when we are using this kind of concept if you change your duty cycle from 100% to 50% you are actually generate the voltage in half the value. If we use the same concept and we change that to 10%, it means that we are not generating 5 volts, we are generating 0.5 volt. So if we can change the duty cycle of the output of 5 volts, we can actually change to the ratio that we we, we, we want to have. So the figure in this page is if we are doing zero duty cycle, of, co of course the output is going to be uh, zero volt. But if we want to generate 25% duty cycle, we generate analog right 64. Let me explain this a little bit. The analog output of Arduino is actually 8 bits. So when we are talking about 8 bits, it's 2 to the power of 8. So if you do the calculation, it's going to be 256. It means that if we have 5 volts, it is corresponding to 256 sections. So if you want to have like 1 volt, what are we going to do? It's going to be 20% of 256. So we're going to we are talking about uh, it's going to be divided by 5, so it's going to be 51 or 52. Let's use 51. So if you want to do 51, you actually generate 1 volt. So if you want to have a corresponding number of 5 volts uh, or a certain kind of output voltage, you will need to calculate how much the duty cycle is going to be. But keep in mind, we are not dealing with from 0% to 100%. This is a 8-bit uh, analog output. So you are changing your number from 0 to 255. So in other words, if you say you want to generate 1.25 volts, we are talking about 25%. So the output, uh, the analog right, you're going to use 64. If you want to gener generate 5 volts, that is going to be half of 256, which is 128. So this is going to give you 2.5 volts. I'm sorry, it should be 2.5 volts. If you want to generate 3.75 volts, of course, your output is going to be um, uh, 75% of 256 so you're going to put 196, 192 over here so you're going to generate 3.75 volts if you want to generate 100 duty cycle some people might think okay I want to use 200, 256 it is going to give you the an error because we're talking about 8 bit 8 bit means we have 256 numbers that we can use as a combination but there is one number which is zero also counts so when we are generate those kind of numbers we are actually generate from zero to 255 okay so when we are dealing with those kind of things we want to output as a 100 percent it is going to be the largest number of eight bits but it's not 256 it should be 256 minus one which is 255 that's the reason you see it's over here you might argue with me okay can i put things over here as 63 and this one over here 127 and this one over here 
191 the answer is yes because it's only changed for about I think it's about 4 millivolts so it is a little it is kind of tiny so it's not really uh, hurt if you want to put 63 127 191 as your in, as your output value that will be fine but keep in mind when you are de dealing with PWM it means that you are not dealing with the real output voltage you are converting the output voltage with a ratio to the 100% um, output so if you know how to do the calculation it's actually just a ratio from one, one, from one value to another so if you know how to deal with that you certainly can generate the number you want to have output however there is one drawback of using PWM for instance if you are using A bits I'm telling you the resolution or the delta V is going to be 4 millivolt. it means that you cannot generate any number you want to the step is going to be 4 millivolts anything between so you say well, I want to generate like 0.1 millivolt unfortunately you cannot do that because the resolution Arduino can have is only 4 millivolts so if you want to do anything smaller than 4 millivolts you're going to be disappointed so choose uh, uh, do your application wisely if you do need to have anything the resolution is better than this number the only way you can do of course for Arduino is to uh, adopt an external uh, chip that doing the analog uh, digital to analog function that it, and, and the connection is something like we talked about in the previous video okay so what is the frequency we use for Arduino so we know that if we want to uh, convert uh, the signal from digital one into analog one if you are kind of like doing like one hertz it's not going to work because you're going to see a 50, 50 um, percent cycle for 2.5 volts very obviously so you when you use your digital uh, multimeter to measure the output voltage you're going to see it's either, either 0 or 5 it's not going to work only when the uh, frequency is fast enough then you can do that so if you are using Arduino Uno the frequency of PWM is 488 Hz so if you are doing something like regular motor DC motor control it should be good enough and but this uh, close to 500 volts uh, Hertz is only used for th pin 3, 9, 10 and 11 if you need to have something faster then you can connect to pin 5 or 6 then it, the, the frequency is going to be doubled to 977 Hertz if you really want to do something like like higher Hertz then you can uh, you can look into uh, Arduino specification and you can use something like timer to uh, accelerate the frequency from about 1 kilohertz over here to almost 4 kilohertz so that can help you a lot when you are dealing with your application but in most of cases if you are dealing with mechanical systems or aerospace systems normally mechanical components uh, won't respond that fast so 500 Hertz or um, as 1 kilohertz most in most of the applications they should be good enough so what is the idea so if we want to convert PWM signal into voltage signal it is more like we are doing something like this so if you want to convert everything into digital from digital into analog you add a capacitor over here saying so you can say well, I want to use my R equals to 4.5 uh, 4.7 uh, 4 kilo ohm and put another uh, capacitor which is one microfarad over here so the signal is going to be like this you're going to see uh, some repos over here and do the average you're going to see the output voltage is actually going to be a smooth line and it is going to vary from 0 volts to 5 volts that we spaced by 
using the PWM uh, ratio to control this output pin. But if you are not using correct combination of R and C, you probably won't be able to see the a smooth straight line. Instead, you're going to see a whole lot of ripples. That is not something we're, we're, we're looking for. So when you are dealing with those kind of circuit, be sure you are careful enough. This is what I mean. If you are not careful enough, you're going to see a lot of repos. Instead of seeing a straight line, you're going to see those kind of repos with lower, uh, lower bound of your outputs and higher bound of your outputs. So this kind of things is going to be a little bit uh, not good for your system. But if the repo is small enough, normally we can ignore that. But you also need to have one thing you need to remember which is settling time. We're going to talk about this in another uh, video. What is the settling time? But uh, when you turn on the power, you are not going to expect the output is going to be the dis destinated voltage right away because the response of your uh, heat out, uh, of your uh, capacitor is not that fast. So when you are dealing with those kind of things, you probably need to wait for maybe once um, 100 uh, nanosecond or something like that. So those things are something we call settling time. So you must understand what is your settling time. Normally we're going to have, um, uh, we, we would like to have the settling time to be 95% uh, or 98.2% accurate so that we can use this one and, and, and confidently. Uh, saying that this is uh, the value we want to have as the output of my Arduino board. But you will need to know you uh, what is the duration you need to wait before you can actually use those uh, uh, outputs. That is something you need to know when you are using a PWM uh, output. The other thing is, okay, I got my PWM output, I got my analog output, so everything is going to be solved. Unfortunately, no. Because in many cases, um, if you want to control a DC motor, for example, you might want to say, okay, I want a I DC motor to uh, move faster. So, however, my Arduino can only generate 0 to 5 volts. That is one thing. So if you want to control a, 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 a DC motor that is going to be 12 volts, what are you going to do? You need to amplify the signal. That is one, one of the thing. And the second thing that you need to know is, uh, sometimes um, we also need to amplify the current because uh, if you cook up your DC motor with your Arduino, chances that you are not going to see anything happen even though you generate a 5 volt signal from your digital output is not going to work at all. Why is that? Because the current is not big enough. Normally when we are using microcontroller, the output current might be only like um, 10 mil second, 10 mil m, or 20 mil m, and if you want to drive a DC motor, you might require to have 800 mil m, and obviously this is much greater than 20 mil m. So when you have this kind of scenario, your motor definitely is not going to rotate. So in that case, what we're going to do is we need to have amplifier to amplify the signal. When we say when I say amplify the signal, there are two meanings. One is amplify the, the voltage, and the other one is we amplify the current. Either one needs to be fulfilled before you can jet, uh, rotate your motor successfully at, at the space space flight uh, angular velocity you design for the application. Okay, but when you we are dealing with those kind of um, uh, amplifier. There are a few things we need to know. If you are looking at an operational amplifier, the circuit is actually like this. The symbol is a triangular, and you have an inverting pin, and you have non-inverting pin. And the output over here is pretty straightforward. Uh, the operational amplifier itself can be used as an amplifier. So when we are doing this thing, the output is going to be the gain, which normally is spaced by in your uh, uh, specification ma made by the manufacturer. Normally this number is between 200 to a few thousands and uh, multiplied by the number that is uh, dif different 
the voltage difference between the non-inverting pin and inverting pin. So if this is a 2000 and the deviation is 1 volt minus negative 1 volts. So the output is clearly should give us 4000 volts. Well, I think you cannot see that. 4000 volts. Well, you also see the two other pins over here. One is Vs plus Vs minus over here. It means that when you are using this operational amplifier, you will need to have power supply hook it to it. So if you want to have 4000 volts, what do you need to do? Of course, you need to have a 4000 volt uh, voltage input to this thing. Can you do that? Clearly, it's too dangerous. We don't want to do that. You might put plus minus 15 volts or plus minus 24 volts as your power supply to this specific chip. So 4000 volts is obviously great, much greater than uh, 24 volts or 12 volts, right? So when we have this kind of scenario, what are we going to do? Or what the chip is going to behave? It is going to saturate, means that it's going to be turned up to the, volt, the biggest number you have as your Vs plus. If you have minus one volt and plus one volt over here, you're going to have negative 4000, but it won't happen. The number you're going to generate is the greatest negative voltage you put into a system. So if you do not have any uh, resistor, capacitor connected to this operational amplifier, you're going to have again, it may be 2000, it may be 200, but the number is not small. And if you multiply the, num the, the gain, which is K open, to the voltage difference input to this specific chip, you're going to saturate your amplifier, which means the output is going to be either Vs plus or Vs minus. That is something you can use as one specific uh, circuit, which is switch. So if V plus is greater than V, v minus, certainly you're going, to, you're going to generate positive Vs output. If V plus is smaller than V minus, then it means that you're going to have your output voltage to be the big uh to the vs minus number so it this by using those kind of uh, configuration you can use operational amplifier as a switch this is um i took few uh photos of what uh, an amplifier going to look like when we are using an amplifier 741 is one of the most common uh, used uh, operational amplifier is cheap and it can be available almost everywhere and this one over here I think is between uh, 25 cents to 40 cents each if you buy from different vendors or from some auction website and if you want to connect that as I said you have V, v plus V minus as your power input that is going to be pins 4 and pin 7 and you have inverting and non-inverting pins that is going to be your pin 2 and pin 3 and your output is going to be connected to pin 6 so there are 3 pins that we do not use then you do not need to connect them okay they are used for some other functions but in this course we are not going to use pin 1 and pin 5 so just uh, use those 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 pins that should be good enough and uh, if you just want to do some uh, single level of uh, processing you can use this kind of a chip but if you know it's going to be heat up a little bit then I would suggest you use this kind of uh, uh, package to uh, design your amplifier because this is a metal one when you use a metal one uh, it got better uh, heat management so you are not you're not going to overheat your chip. So just like what I said, if you want to use on off controller or comparator, this is a very specific uh, term we use for operational amplifier circuit. So either we use on off controller or comparator. 
that is basically the same if you have v1 plus v2 or you your your v1 is is your non-inverting and your v2 is your inverting so if your v1 plus uh, greater than v2 the output is going to be the vs plus if your v1 is smaller than v2 it's going to be uh, uh, the output of this one it also generates a search signal which is if your v1 equals to e2 v2 then the output is going to be zero because if you ground them together there is no voltage difference so so that the output is going to be zero volts so there are three possibilities for this kind of output one is your vs plus that it means that your v v1 is greater than v2 if your v2 is smaller than v1 uh, uh if your v1 is smaller than v2 then the output is going to be vs minus if your v1 and v2 are equal then the output is going to be zero volt so there are only those three possibilities no other things is going to happen the other thing is we want to have voltage follower just like what i explained earlier sometimes we are not having enough current so we cannot drive the the motor to rotate or we cannot turn on certain kind of actuator so in that case we would like to boost up our current but sometimes we don't want to change anything about our voltage so we can use voltage follower or a cold buffer to uh, amplify the current meanwhile I'm not going to change my voltage and it should be the same as what I put into the uh, generate from the uh, microcontroller unit so this circuit over here provide a very good uh, function that is going to increase the current but the voltage is is going to be the same so this is something we call buffer and this can be very handy Let's talk about amplifier. So I want to have, I have uh, two volts input, but I want to generate five, five volts. So what am I going to do? So five volts divided by two, the gain is going to be 2.5, or the, amplif uh, the amplifier, the ratio is going to be 2.5. So what am I going to do? If you design a circuit like this, then the ratio is going to be something over here. So this is going to be your input and this is going to be your output and I need to have 2.5 which means my RF can be used can use 5 kilo ohm and my uh, RIN over here can be 2 kilo ohm. So if you put things over here you're going to find out this one is going to be 2.5 but there is a, a drawback over here. When you are putting 1 volt over here the output is going to be negative. 2.5 volts so it it is not only amplify your signal you also inverting the signal that is the reason we call this one inverting amplifier so in order to compensate for this kind of situation what can we do we are going to use two inverting amplifier so just use the example we are using right now So I want to have the output to be have a ratio 2.5 which means I have 2 volts over here I want to have this part over here to be 5 volts right but based on the configuration over here what happened is we're not going to get 5 volts if you just use this this one over here we're not going to get 5 volts we're going to get negative 2.5 negative 5 volts that is not good a good thing so what we're going to do is we're going to use 2 kilo ohm so over here what you generate is going to be negative 5 volts so in that case you're going to put 1 kilo ohm over here and 1 kilo ohm over here the ratio if you put into this formula is going to be negative 1 so this ratio over here is negative 2.5 this one over here negative 5 so output is going to be 2.5 which we convert uh, the, the voltage from inverting into non-inverting with two sequential connection of inverting amplifiers 
Does that make sense? So if we can know how to deal with this thing, then you should be able to build a circuit easily and amplify the, the value to the va to the value you want to do. Sometimes we would need to use negative sing signal, but in many cases we probably want to use uh, non-inverting amplifier. Okay. Now. Since we have inverting amplifier, certainly we are going to have a thing called non-inverting amplifier. So when we have non-inverting amplifier, the configuration is going to be look like this. So you still have two resistors, R1 and R2. When you put your formula all together, it's going to be like this. So by if we say when we want to have 2.5, just like what we have in the previous slide, then it's going to be 1 plus R2 over R1. So we can do uh, 3 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm. So over here it is going to be 1 plus 1 1.5 and output is going to be 2.5 larger that times the original signal. And this can be fantastic because we just use one chip and we can generate the ratio we desire. That is so wonderful. And this can save us a lot of uh, uh, cost because if you, we have one million pieces of those kind of amplifier need to build, we now we are using only one operational amplifier, not two operational amplifiers. So this is fantastic. Take that is true, but there is also one drawback. When you look at this number over here, one plus R two over R one. So when you are doing those kind of things, it means that your signal can be always the ratio is always greater than one right so what's the problem of this one are we doing we are doing amplifier right the answer is yes and no because sometimes in in the in many cases we probably want to amplify our signal but sometimes we need to string our signal so let's say I have a device that generates plus minus 10 volts and this signal must be fit into an MCU and this MCU is a very expensive one and you can only generate accept signal from plus minus 3 volts so you have plus minus 10 volts and you output from one device and you wanna fit this signal into the MCU that we we, we are using right now can we do that? of course it, the answer is no because if you hook it up together with your MCU you burn the circuit and that is not going to be a good sign so we need instead of amplifier we need to string the signal but if you are using non-inverting amplifier you can never make it up because the gain over here can only be greater than one so you have no choice but using inverting amplifier like what we did in the previous page if you are doing the smaller uh, the ratio is smaller than 1, then RF is going to be smaller than RIN. That's the only, that's that's actually pretty straightforward. But after you design your, your um, ratio, you will need to add another inverting amplifier with again equals to negative 1 in cascade with the original amplifier you design. In that case, everything is going to be fine. You can convert in your, num uh, your number to any ratio you want to, either it's positive or it's negative. Does it make sense? So you can uh, invert in the signal or you can make the signal the same phase as you want to do. So those are things that can be handy and you would need to remember that uh, when you are using those kind of amplifiers in your applications. So let's do a little bit calculation over here. If my RF over here is 1 kilo ohm and my R uh, input over here is 10 kilo ohm. So use, by using this formula, we know my gain is negative 0.1 because it's going to be 1 over 10. So it's going to be negative 1 over 10 or negative 0.1. If we swap the values of RIN and RF, put this RF equals to 10 kilo ohm and this one over here is 1 kilo ohm. What happened is we are increased the gain to 10 but since this is an inverting amplifier, we need to put a negative sign in front of it. So the ratio becomes negative 10. 
Okay, that is for inverting amplifier. Now we move to non-inverting amplifier. What are we going to do? So the formula is this one. If my R1 is 1 kilo ohm and R2 is 10 kilo ohm, the ratio becomes 1 plus 10, which is 11. If we swap the R1 and R2 resistor, then it becomes 1 plus 0 0.1. So it's going to be 1.1. The ratio is going to be 1.1. So this is handy if you have the amplifier. You, you, you always need to amplify your signal greater than, z, uh, greater than 1. Then we use this one. But if you want to do, uh, you want to swing the signal between 0 and 1 ratio, then you will need to use two inverting amplifiers to uh, build your circuit. The other thing is that we want to know difference amplifier, which means I want to amplify the signal between those two things. Well, sometimes it's necessary because we are V2 minus V1. It means that we are subtracting the signal V2, uh, V1 from V2 and with an amplifier with a, a ratio so if you want you don't want to change your ratio you can just use r3 equals to r1 which is this one and this one if you don't if you uh, need to find out what's the difference uh, between two instruments then this one over here can be a very handy circuit you can build so that is difference amplifier since we have subtraction certainly we have addition when we are dealing with addition, it's actually a combination of a lot of inverting amplifier. So if we forget about this part, just use R1 and RF. This is actually inverting amplifier. If we ignore R1 and the rest of, of the resistors, but only keep R2, then the ratio is going to be negative RF divided by R2. input and this is going to be output so this is another circuit that we're going to use so summing junction is a very handy uh, circuit the only restriction for this kind of things is that if you add too many signals all together you're going to saturate your circuit which means if your if my uh, vs plus and vs minus are positive 15 volts and negative 15 volts the greatest output voltage is going to be 15 volts if so if you add multiple uh, signals all together chances that it's going to be greater than positive 15 volts that is not going to be a good thing that we're going to do so when you are dealing with those kind of stuff be sure you know what you're doing and to prevent everything from saturation we can also design integrator using those kind of stuff. So if you want to design an integrator, this is a circuit. And we can also build a differentiator. We're not going to use those two things in this class uh, for any uh, uh, circuit development. Those are the things that uh, if you have learned engineering, mathematics, or uh, differential equations, or you have taken uh, like uh, dynamics or corresponding uh, courses you must know we have uh, first order and second order systems so when we are de dealing with first order and second order systems we must use uh, differentiation and integration to represent the uh, equation that has more than first order approximation so if those are the things you need to know and you need to uh, emulate using hardware then differentiator and integrator are important tools that you want to put together to simulate your signal, uh, your, your, your hardware. Okay, so that is amplifier. And ampli uh, operational amplifier in the previous page is good for um, uh, dealing with um, uh, analog signals, but in, uh, sometimes we are required to do other things this one over here is edge bridge edge bridge is one device that is going to control the uh, rotating direction of our motor so 
the key, uh, the important thing is that we are using microcontroller to control the motor. However, the motor may be heavy duty one. Clearly, your PC, your uh, microcontroller unit is not capable to turn on the power, to turn on the motor that hook it to the Arduino board. You simply can't. So you might need to use a higher uh, a device that has higher current. Not certainly to be higher voltage, but higher current is a must. So uh, if we know and we only have a single output voltage, let's say I have 0 to 12 volts. So I want to do this to control the motor. What am I going to do? So I want to do 5 volts and I want to rotate the, the motor to clockwise. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to close this one and close this one. So my output voltage is going to be going to this direction. Uh, and of course, keep S2 and S1 open. So they are going to be uh, open circuit. So the current is not going to flow in through. But when, we, when I'm do, doing something like this, the voltage is going to be close. The motor in this direction. So the current is going to be the for the red line is is doing so it will rotate in one direction instead if we are not going to use uh, this combination instead let me change the, the, num the color of the pointer if I want to close this one and this one, what happened? And keep S1 and S4 open. So, since this is open and this is open, current is not going to flow in through this one. So, it will be something like this. When you go to this one, then we go to this direction because this is open. So, it's rotating in this direction to the opposite direction. And over here, it forms another complete circuit okay so we are using a single power supply to change the direction of the DC motor if this on off switch S1, S2, S3, S4 are controlled by PLMN signal we can control the motor to the rotating speed we desire so that is the basic idea of edge bridge edge bridge is has been applied widely in various uh, uh, motor applications. If you want to build a robot that is moving around on the grace, or uh, you you want to have a sweeping robot, edge bridge can can be a very handy one. And but you will need to be careful about how this is going to be uh, adopted to control the motor to be plus uh, uh, rotating, uh, moving forward or moving backward. This is uh, the config configuration of edge bridge and this is circuit that we might use for our uh, device. So typically a uh, edge bridge is a 15 pin uh, chip and normally it's not going to be too expensive. You want to buy one and you want if you want to build your own circuit, the next page is can be used to control your, control your motor by using Arduino. So the basic idea is pretty simple. You put analog output one and analog output two to your um, uh, Arduino board, and the rest can be connected in this way. This one over here, it can be used for a single motor. If if you connect the other side of this chip, you can actually control another motor. So this can be a very handy circuit. But there is one thing you need to remember when you are dealing with the uh, the motor using L two ninety A or H bridge circuit uh, chip. The total current is limited. Or L290A 
this number is 4 amp so if you have 3 amp on one side and you have 2 amp on the other side I can tell you you're going to burn the circuit or your the, the circuit is not going to work so when you are dealing with those kind of things you still need to be careful about how much voltage you are dealing with and how much voltage your output so that your circuit is going to be safe that is something we're going to talk or we are talking about using PWM and uh, uh, motor motor driver so we're going to talk about other things in the next video